Alex fully recovered, except for a few minor kinks. Has he asked for anything special? Yes, morning for breakfast. Uh, he requested something called wheat germ, organic honey, and tiger's milk. <laughs> oh, yes, those are the charm substances that some years ago were felt to contain life-preserving properties. You mean there was no deep fat? No steak or cream pies or hot fudge? Those were thought to be unhealthy. Precisely the opposite of what we now know to be true. Incredible. Well, he, uh, he wants to know where he is and what's going on. I think it's time to tell him. In the film Sleeper, Woody Allen plays the owner of a health food store who is cryogenically frozen in 1973 and defrosted 200 years later to find, of course, a completely different world. The film is, in some ways, a parody of real life. In 1961, the American physiologist Ansel Keys was depicted on the cover of Time magazine. Ansel Keys was largely responsible for the adoption of the idea that dietary fat causes heart disease. In 1984, Time magazine led with an article informing us about the dangers of cholesterol. Then, in a complete reversal, the June 2014 edition of Time led with a cover story encouraging us to eat butter and explaining how fat was falsely labelled as the enemy. Problems associated with the heart and blood vessels are responsible for 30% of all deaths worldwide. For the last 60 years, our health authorities have believed that dietary saturated fat and cholesterol play a causal role in these deaths. Yeah, I mean, I think the lipid heart hypothesis, Ansel Keys' original hypothesis from the 50s, still stands up. And in many respects, the advent of the statins, highly effective drugs at lowering cholesterol, particularly LDL cholesterol, demonstrate beneficial effects. That fulfills quite a lot of causal requirements. Uh, you've got a risk factor, it's consistent, you see it in different places at different times, um, and when you experimentally lower that risk factor, you see the effect you predict. However, over the years, numerous contradictions to this belief system have emerged and have been almost completely ignored. One such contradiction has become known as the French paradox. The paradox has begun to intrigue foreign researchers. Among them, Dr. Kurt Ellison, a cardiologist and professor at the School of Public Health at Boston University. In this restaurant where we're having lunch, this is something you just wouldn't find in an American restaurant. <laughs> a Lyonnaise salad bowl, which is pig's head pate with parsley, black pudding, which, you know, is very fat, and potatoes in oil. Uh, double fat sliced tripe sautéed with onions <laughs> and hot sausage with lentils and potatoes and all this is routine stuff there's something about the french that seems to be protecting them and, we, and we're not sure what it is we're looking for the french paradox also prompted dr malcolm kendrick to investigate the causes of heart disease in more detail i started looking at the figures and i realized that well if you looked at the standard figures the french had very much the same cholesterol levels. They ate more saturated fat. When you looked at exercise, it was about the same body weight, blood pressure, good cholesterol. You took all the conventional risk factors and the French probably should have a slightly higher rate of heart disease. And yet it was vastly lower. So I thought, you know, there's definitely something not right here. This is not working. I mean, the figures just didn't work. More recent data confirms that the French are still breaking all the rules. The French still eat more saturated fat than people in the United Kingdom, but have about one-third the number of heart disease deaths. Well, uh, my explanation is, of course, the consumption of alcohol. There has been for years the belief by doctors in many countries that alcohol, in particular red wine, reduces the risk of heart disease. That's true. It's also true in America. Well, people who drink red wine in America tend to be middle class, highly educated, have healthy lifestyles. So it's red wine drinking tends to be associated with a certain lifestyle. So this is really just an association that they found. You can find that moderate alcohol consumption protects against heart disease. You'll find that in Spain, you'll find that in Italy, you'll find it in France, you'll find it in any country. Moderate alcohol consumption is protective, not red wine particularly. Red wine has no obvious advantages over anything else. France is not the only place we find a paradox. 
People in Iceland also consume more saturated fat than people in the United Kingdom, but Iceland only has about half the heart disease death rate. In Denmark, people eat less saturated fat than people in Iceland, but the Danes have a higher rate of heart disease deaths. The Portuguese have about one-third less saturated fat in their diet than the French, but a higher rate of heart disease deaths. People in Lithuania consume only half as much saturated fat as people in the United Kingdom, but Lithuania has almost double the rate of heart disease deaths. Some authorities say that our saturated fat intake should be below 7% of total calories. Lithuania is almost on target in this respect, but Lithuania has one of the highest heart disease death rates in the world. Several very recent studies have conclusively demonstrated a lack of any relationship between saturated fat consumption and heart disease. And questioning the dangers posed by an established threat, saturated fats. A meta-analysis of 72 studies found no convincing evidence that a diet rich in these animal-based fats increased the risk of heart disease. Bruce Griffin is Professor of Nutritional Metabolism at the University of Surrey, and Professor Jeremy Pearson is Medical Director of the British Heart Foundation, who part funded the research. How convinced are we that there is a direct correlation between saturated fat intake and, and, and heart disease? What evidence is out there to, to convince us of that? There is an enormous amount of evidence. We're pretty confident that there's a strong relationship between saturated fat and blood cholesterol. Just remind us how convinced you are that raised cholesterol levels lead to increased risk of heart disease and stroke. OK, that's incontrovertible as well, I think, in the sense that not only is the association absolutely barned or obvious that if you raise cholesterol, you raise the risk of heart disease, that's all over the world, any population, but also we know that any intervention that lowers cholesterol lowers risk, so the two are directly related and causal. All three people taking part in this radio programme, including the presenter, already firmly believed that saturated fat and cholesterol cause heart disease, and no one with the opposite point of view was invited to take part. This particular episode of Inside Health seemed to be just an attempt to explain away an awkward scientific finding that challenged the belief system held by medical opinion leaders. As we've heard, the current belief system suggests any intervention that lowers cholesterol also lowers the risk of heart disease. When people talk about trying to end heart attacks uh, in, in the world, or in America at least, one of the ways to do that is to take a look inside the heart, see what's happening before someone ever, ever has a problem. And that's what we're going to do here today. You're actually going to look for what in my heart? Yes, for calcium, which is part of the atherosclerotic process, the plaques in the heart. Studies have consistently shown that cholesterol-lowering statins actually increase the amount of calcified plaque in the arteries. Ironic for a drug that's supposed to prevent heart disease. The Veterans Affairs Diabetes Trial found that more frequent statin use was associated with accelerated coronary artery calcification. Another study published in the journal Atherosclerosis found that statins also increase the amount of calcified plaque in healthy people without diabetes. And yet another study published in the Journal of the American College of Cardiology found similar results. These studies have been quietly ignored by the medical establishment and the mainstream media. However, these important findings were highlighted in a review article written by Professor Sharif Sultan and Dr. Neve Hines in 2013. Professor Sultan is a world-leading vascular and endovascular surgeon. He's chief of vascular and endovascular surgery at the Galway Clinic in Ireland and chairman of the Western Vascular Institute. Professor Sultan has over 25 years of vascular experience and gained his qualifications in Egypt, Dublin, Paris, Romania, Switzerland, the United States and London. His research portfolio has been recognized by 29 international awards, and he's one of the pioneers of minimally invasive endovascular techniques. Now, the idea is cholesterol causing heart disease is unproven. Cholesterol is crucial for energy, for thyroid function, for sex hormone function, 
for normal ability of the brain to perform, for all your function in the body to do well. If your cholesterol goes up, that means it's a compensatory mechanism. You cannot drug it with statin. Professor Sultan told us about numerous case studies where his patients have experienced dramatic improvements in their health by stopping their statin medication. A nun who runs a big convent and uh, uh, she suddenly starting forgetting where's the checks, the combination of the safe. She knows everybody by the name. She starts forgetting who's coming and who's going out. She used to control everything, have the keys, have everything. She was working like a Swiss clock. They saw that she has a carotid artery disease, so they sent it to me. CT scan, MRIs, duplex, you name it. Couldn't find anything at all. And again, we start talking to her. And she said, yes, six months ago, the GP gave me that uh, medication to lower my cholesterol, who was 5.8. The woman initiative study done over 150,000 women shows no evidence in primary prevention with statin for women. She stopped it, she's back running, and every Christmas I have a fantastic card from her thanking me. I didn't do anything in fact, I've just stopped a tablet. And her life is giving back to her on a golden plate. We asked Professor Sultan about the reaction to his review article that was heavily critical of the widespread use of statins. Okay, you know the phrase red, retired and even dangerous. A lot of them like that. They have coalesced in a corner and they don't want to change their mind. However, the young generation well accepted and they congratulate me on that because the social media have exposed everything. Some of my colleagues supported me like crazy, but some of them tried to discredit the publication. However, they couldn't come back with one single publication that could support their claim. And that's why we call them red. Professor Jeremy Pearson of the British Heart Foundation states that the relationship between cholesterol and heart disease is consistent all over the world in any population. Of course, the British Heart Foundation is not the only organisation that holds this belief. Now to explore the link between saturated fat and heart disease further, the National Heart Foundation Chief Executive Dr Lynn Roberts joins us from Melbourne. Dr Roberts, thanks very much for, uh, for taking the time out. Now, a number of cardiologists are uh, adding voices to the call to bust the so-called myth of the role of saturated fat in heart disease. Are you still confident that saturated fat is still the number one culprit? We at the Heart Foundation strongly believe that there's very good evidence from right around the world that shows that saturated fat plays a role in uh, raising blood cholesterol and of course high blood cholesterol is a risk factor for heart disease. If we look at the populations already mentioned, we can see that there is not a great deal of difference between the average cholesterol levels for each country. Yet, the number of heart disease deaths varies greatly. For example, Lithuania and Portugal have roughly the same average cholesterol levels, but Lithuania has more than four times the number of heart disease deaths. We might wonder how Professor Jeremy Pearson and other experts could have missed this data challenging the cholesterol hypothesis especially considering that the data is actually published by the British Heart Foundation themselves. In fact, rather than being consistent all over the world, it's actually difficult to find any country that fits with the saturated fat or cholesterol hypothesis. In Greece, we find another so-called paradox. The island of Crete is steeped in history, being home to the oldest city in Europe and the ancient Minoan civilization. Crete is a popular destination for European holidaymakers during the summer months. But away from the coast, up here in the mountains, there's a village that has been of interest to researchers. The village is called Anogia and researchers have taken an interest in it because despite eating a high-fat diet, 
the residents of the village have an extremely low rate of heart disease. Researchers from the Wellcome Trust Sanger Institute in Cambridge, United Kingdom, proposed that the villagers are protected from their diet by a rare genetic mutation. Considering the history of Anugia and its people, a genetic link may seem plausible, since the people are known for their strong character and resilience. Anugia has always been heavily involved in the resistance against foreign invaders to the island. As a result, the village was burned down twice by the Turks and then again by the Nazis. After each demolition, the village was rebuilt. The strength and resilience of the people of Anugia is not in question. However, the genetic study was inconclusive. The researchers did find the rare genetic mutation to be much more common in Anugia. However, it was still only present in about 2% of the population. So Anugia remains yet another so-called paradox. Another place that has been of interest to researchers is the island of Sardinia. Sardinia has an unusually high number of people who live to be more than 100 years old. Scientists have highlighted the Barbagia region in particular as being associated with a very long lifespan. The traditional diet of the Barbagia region is known to consist of meat and cheese. Suckling pig is a particular favorite. In 2011, Sardinians called for formal recognition of their diet, insisting that the secret to a long life can be found in their traditional diet of lamb, roast piglet, milk, and cheese. The contradictions to the cholesterol hypothesis are not confined to Europe. Japan is another country associated with a low rate of heart disease. For example, the heart disease mortality rate in Japan is about one-third to one-fifth of that in the United States. It's often assumed that the Japanese consume a low-fat diet and have low cholesterol levels. They have increased their saturated fat intake by 200% and over the last 50 years, their cholesterol level has gone up by about 25 to 30% on average and their heart disease rate has gone down by 70%. Uh, possibly more extraordinary is that their rate of stroke has gone down by 700%. Within Japan, some places have an even lower rate of heart disease deaths than the rest of the country. Recent studies have highlighted Fukuoka Prefecture as having a low rate of heart disease deaths even by Japanese standards. Fukuoka is famous for Hakata ramen, a noodle soup covered with thickly sliced fatty pork. Other popular dishes include motsunabe, a kind of hot pot made using beef or pork offal, and yakitori. In general, the food in Fukuoka tends to be fatty and salty, challenging not only the cholesterol hypothesis, but also the idea that dietary salt causes heart disease. Tomohito Hamazaki is Professor Emeritus at the University of Toyama. More than 15 years ago, I was a guy who believed in cholesterol theory. I'm a, I was a very strong cholesterol believer. And every time I found a patient with very high cholesterol levels, I persuaded him or her to take statins. I was wrong. But I believe in that theory. Cholesterol is nothing. Um, <clears throat> we Japanese have uh, very high cholesterol levels and are still enjoying low rates of coronary heart disease death. One of the issues that prompted Professor Hamazaki to look again at the cholesterol theory was the link between lower cholesterol levels and increased mortality. In essence, where cholesterol levels are concerned, Many studies have shown the higher, the better. This is the meta-analysis of Japanese five um, reports uh, <clears throat> showing the relationship between cholesterol levels and all cause of mortality. In men, it's just this trend. And in the women, uh, there's nothing here. But uh, if your cholesterol levels are uh, very, very low, then your chance to die is bigger than, than the other groups. Liver cancer and cirrhosis mortality. So if your cholesterol levels, levels are very low, your chance to die from these diseases 
uh, here. And this is a control. So it decreases like this. And look at this. There is no motility from cirrhosis. Here again, it's um, liver cancer incidence. So it's just uh, the higher, the better. No victims here. And in women, it's something like this. Let's look at Korean data. This is very good. Over 1 million Korean adults were followed for 14 years. And uh, the Y line axis is showing uh, liver cancer incidence. The same here, the same trend here. Experts who support the idea that lower cholesterol is better are aware of the connection between low cholesterol levels and a shorter lifespan. However, their theory is that it is the disease that causes low cholesterol rather than low cholesterol causing disease, a concept known as reverse causality. Okay, it happens to a certain degree. Uh, yes, it happens. There's an epidemiological study following people for, let's say, 10 years. And if that kind of re reverse causality happens, then let's uh, delete or exclude that that happened during the first one, two, three, four, five years. Then people suffering from uh, serious disease may die away. So just take the latter half of uh, data, then check everything. But usually <clears throat> we still find the relationship between cholesterol and all cause of mortality, and it's the higher the better. That means the reverse causality does not exist to a very significant degree.